We're guided by the lessons of history and a desire to promote stability, stability all over and strength in our land. This destructive cycle of intervention and chaos must finally, folks, come to an end. Welcome back to Lee. That was President-elect Donald Trump on Tuesday night vowing to scale back U.S. intervention overseas, all part of his America First policy. Joining me now to talk about this and more, Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, Democrat of Hawaii. Hawaii, I guess you say. She serves on the Armed Services and Foreign Affairs Committee. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate Aloha, Jake. it. Jake. Always good to see you. So let me ask you a question. Do you agree with Donald Trump's vision of America first when it comes to foreign policy? Uh, I'm glad to hear him talking about ending our country's uh, interventionist regime change war policies. As you know, this is something that I've been talking about for years, that we need to stop the, the destruction that's been caused by our country, continuously getting involved in these counterproductive regime change wars that not only end up strengthening our enemy in groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda, but they actually end up causing more suffering uh, for the people in these countries where we are intervening, as in Syria now. I know you feel that way about Syria and Libya and Iraq. Do you feel that way about Afghanistan? Uh, Afghanistan is a little bit of a different situation, right. okay. but, but yes, essentially. You met with Donald Trump two weeks after he was elected. There was some speculation that he might offer you a cabinet position or some sort of position. Were you hoping to work in the Trump administration? Uh, I love my job. The people of Hawaii chose to rehire me again in November, and I look forward to continuing to work for them. Uh, my goal in going there, uh, in receiving the invitation to speak to President-elect Trump, was to speak specifically about the situation in Syria, the dangerous consequences of escalating uh, the regime change war that the United States is fueling there, along with countries like Saudi Arabia and Qatar uh, and Turkey, uh, escalating that through a so-called no-fly zone uh, or safe zone. Uh, and urging him to end our uh, regime change war there, to stop funding both directly and indirectly groups that are working with uh, al-Qaeda and ISIS, and to stop funneling those dollars and weapons and other assistance through these other countries like Saudi Arabia, who are directly supporting these terrorist groups, who are supposed to be our enemy, who we're supposed to be fighting to defeat. And tell me about the legislation. You have a bill that you introduced today that would yes. address loopholes. You say have allowed American taxpayer dollars to fund terror groups such as al-Qaeda and ISIS in Syria. Are you, you really suggesting that the U.S. government is funding these terrorist groups? Uh, I'm not only suggesting it. This is, this is the reality that we're, we're living in. And not directly, mo Most though. Americans, you know, if, if you or I were to go and provide money, uh, weapons or support or whatever to a group like al-Qaeda or ISIS, we would immediately be thrown in jail. Uh, however, the U.S. government has been providing money, weapons, intel assistance, and other types of support through the CIA directly to these groups that are working with uh, and are affiliated with al-Qaeda and ISIS. So you're saying the CIA is giving money to groups in Syria and those groups are working with al-Nusra and ISIS? There, are, there have been numerous reports from the New York Times to the Wall Street Journal and other news outlets who have declared that these rebel groups have formed these battlefield alliances with al-Qaeda, that essentially these al-Qaeda groups are in charge of every single rebel group on the ground fighting in Syria to overthrow the Syrian government. And the U.S. government says that they vet the groups that they give money to very, very closely, uh, and that you're wrong. There, there are not alliances between groups that the American taxpayers fund and these other groups. Obviously, they all are fighting Assad. Uh, I, I beg to differ. Evidence has shown time and time again uh, that that is not the case, that we are both directly and indirectly supporting these groups who are allied with, are partnered with uh, al-Qaeda and ISIS in working to overthrow the Syrian government of Assad. And we've also been providing that support through countries like Saudi Arabia, Turkey and Qatar uh, to do that. Quickly before you go. Um I know uh, the, the, some of your colleagues, Democrats, have expressed concern about too many retired generals being in the Trump uh, cabinet. You have uh, the National Security Advisor, uh, General Flynn, and then also he's talked about uh, General Mattis uh, and General Kelly at the Pentagon and Homeland Security. Uh, do you share their concerns or do you, do you disagree? Uh, I don't share their concerns. In fact, as a veteran and as someone who's still serving in the Hawaii Army National Guard, I find it pretty offensive for people to outright discriminate against veterans. Here you have generals who have literally spent their whole lives serving our country, putting service before self, putting their lives on the line to defend democracy. 
and yet people are criticizing them and discriminating against them, saying just because you served as a general previously, you are disqualified from serving in a high position of leadership in our government. These people arguably uh, have put far more on the line and are far more deeply personally committed to upholding and protecting our democracy uh, than their critics. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, thanks so much. Always Thank good you. to see you. From Mr. Speaker, under U.S. law, it is illegal for you or me or any American to provide any type of assistance to Al-Qaeda, ISIS, or other terrorist groups. If we broke this law, we'd be thrown in jail. Yet the U.S. government's been violating this law for years, directly and indirectly supporting allies and partners of groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS, with money, weapons, intelligence, and other support in their fight to overthrow the Syrian government. A recent New York Times article confirmed that rebel groups supported by the U.S., quote, have entered into battlefield alliances with the affiliate of Al-Qaeda in Syria, formerly known as al-Nusra. The Wall Street Journal reports that rebel groups are, quote, doubling down on their alliance with Al-Qaeda. This alliance has rendered the phrase moderate rebels meaningless. We must stop this madness. We must stop arming terrorists. I'm introducing the Stop Arming Terrorists Act today to prohibit taxpayer dollars from being used to support terrorists. Mr. Speaker, I yield back. We have the Defense Secretary Ash Carter in Brussels convening leaders there tomorrow, including Arab states, asking them to do more. They say that we need more U.S. leadership, that we should commit U.S. ground troops. Should we commit U.S. ground troops? Well, you know, Syria is a whole different thing, and you look at what's happening. I, I view ISIS as very important. And I love the fact that Russia is hitting ISIS. And as far as I'm concerned, they've got to continue to hit but ISIS. But you know what and, Russia is doing you know in Syria? Syria. Russia is hitting, no, they're hitting the both. groups that we're backing. Sure. And why are we backing the group? We don't even know who those people are. I speak to generals. They're saying we're giving billions of dollars of equipment to people. We have no. Here we go again. Mm -hmm. We're right. giving all of this money and all of this equipment to people. We have no idea who they are. They're probably worse than Assad. I mean, I'm, Assad's no baby. He's not good. But... Who are the people that we're backing? Here we go you again know with that's, Libya. That's President Obama's argument. Yeah. Well, if I we think don't that's know good. who the weapons you know, will I mean, fall into whose hands. We have no idea. Well, why is he doing that? I mean, he's giving them a lot of weaponry. And we're backing people that want to knock out Assad. Russia and Iran, which is now a power, we've made mm -hmm. them a power, they're backing Assad. We've got to get rid of ISIS. We've got to get rid of the people that but are chopping off everybody's but head. You say you have have a good relationship with Putin or would have a good relationship? I think with I would have a very good relationship, but, but who knows? So I mean, could you know. convince Putin to get Assad to step aside? Well, they've been trying to do that. Yeah. Could I? I don't think it's that important, to be honest with you. I think, mm -hmm. frankly, let's say you get rid of Assad or you knock out that government. Who's going to take over? The people that we're backing and then you're going to have, like, Libya, mm -hmm. right? You, you take Gaddafi. Oh, we have to get rid of Gaddafi. Look what happened after we got rid of Gaddafi. Look what happened so after we got rid, rid of Gaddafi. So getting rid of Gaddafi was a mistake. It was just, it, yeah. It was, to me, it was, it was a total mistake. mistake. I mean, you, you, Benghazi. Benghazi was the least. Look, look at what's going on over there. It's a mess. Nobody knows anything about anything. You look at you look at Saddam Hussein. We get rid of Saddam Hussein. The terrorists, it's the Harvard so of So getting rid of Gaddafi and getting rid of Saddam Hussein were both mistakes. Had we not done anything, had our politicians gone to the beach and enjoyed the sun, we would be in a lot better position than we are right now. Saddam Hussein, no good guy, but Saddam Hussein killed terrorists. Now Iraq is the Harvard of terror. You want to become a terrorist, go to Iraq. They'll teach you how, okay? Mm -hmm. Saddam Hussein was a bad guy, but you know one other thing he did he blocked Iran I mean once you okay. once you knocked out that section all of us and I said it in 2003 2004 I was against the war I said you're going to have total it, the Middle East is going to be a mess They used to fight forever. They couldn't move they go 10 feet one way 10 feet the other now you have a total destabilization in the Middle East because we knocked out one of the blocks. Well, 